Welcome to the fourth video in our quadcopter building series three. Now in this one we're actually building this quadcopter here. Now this is using a slightly unusual flight controller. This is the Brain FPV flight controller and also the power distribution board underneath. Now if you want to know a little bit more about why that's a bit special then you can go and watch some of the earlier videos in the series that explain why we're using this board. But the very quick version is it's an F4 based flight controller and it also provides a vector based on screen display which is something we've never seen before. Now in the last videos we've got to this stage here where we have the motors and ESCs connected, we have the main bit soldered on to the flight controller itself and the power distribution board but there are a last couple of things that we need to get sorted out before we can go into the next video, do the beta flight setup, test that everything's working and then take it out for its first flight. So in this video we're going to run through those things. First of all we've got to connect all of the motor signal wires up to the output pins on the flight controller. Be very careful with that. Connections are different when it's drone in versus beta flight. So you need to know that in advance before you start wiring all this up. Uh, they connect to these pins here on the flight controller. I'm going to solder mine directly with just enough room so I can tech the top board off if I need to. And that's simply because I haven't got lots of room here for pins. So we'll do that first. The next thing we'll do then is we'll connect the FPV equipment. Now the FPV equipment that I'm going to use here, this is a Quantum Elite QE66 transmitter. We've looked at these on the channel already. Uh, we're going to pop one on here, desperately trying to find a transmitter that would fit in the frame and allow me to come out through the hole. Unfortunately this is the closest that I could get to that. The challenge for me is that with these little transmitters, there's a little button on them that you have to press in order for it to turn on and start transmitting. Now I like that as a safety idea, so for me that's probably going to have to sit on there and it will stay in place with a bit of foam and a cable tie. We're going to have to power this thing and we're also going to have to route the video cables too. Uh, the camera we'll put in this, we'll use a Runcan camera and we are going to use the trusty Swift. Now the Swift that we've got here has got quite a narrow field of view, it's a 90 degree one. However, Runcam do now provide lots of different lenses that you can try with different fields of view and millimetres and other bits and bobs. So when this quad's finished, it's actually going to be a great little platform for me to screw and unscrew all of those bits on and see what difference they make. Now this camera mounts in that gap, so it kind of mounts in there looking like that out the front. Uh, this has a very wide input voltage range so we're going to be able to run this directly from the FPV transmitter but we'll talk about the power outlets that are available. We've got one in use at the front of the power distribution board. That little riser that we looked at last time is uh, powering the flight controller itself with the 5 volts but we do have a spare 5 volts too. Last thing we do once the FPV stuff is sorted is we're going to install one of these little guys. This is the trusty little XSR from FR Sky. We love these things, really small, super lightweight, and that should hopefully fit inside underneath and we can route the antennas up either side and get that sorted. The challenge with putting this stuff together is it is a little bit tight for space. With the power distribution board connections being at the bottom, we really need to make the FPV cables off first. So let's very quickly talk about the power at the front of the lower power distribution board to explain how you can connect your video transmitter and the camera in a way that's going to work and be great. So if we just jump onto some slides, so here is the front of that power distribution board at the bottom. Now if you remember we have a 5 volt and ground at the very left hand side. We're using that at the moment to power the flight controller. There's a little riser soldered into that and that's what's going to power the RE1. Then we have another 5 volt and ground next to it that's identical that we can use for whatever we want. So that's available for us to power FPV equipment or LEDs or whatever we fancy. Each of those has a 1.25 amp maximum, which should easily be enough for most of the things that we're going to need. 
The next thing besides that is a filtered connection to the main battery power itself. Now that is a very interesting one for us. We might fly this 3S, we might fly it 4S. Now we're very lucky in that the video transmitter that we're interested in will take anything from 7 to 28 volts. So it would be easy for us to connect our FPV video transmitter directly to that filtered output. That'll only supply about 750 milliamps or 0.75 of an amp, but that should be enough to run the FPV equipment. So we'll try it there first of all. The last one on the very right hand side is a 12 volt supply, really only there to run 12 volt cameras. So if you have a CCD camera, you'd be able to plug it into there. It only has 150 milliamp output so you can't really run anything else out of it so I would say that 12 volt on the right hand side is pretty much for your camera only. So how could you connect this thing together? At the moment we're just worrying about the power because that's the stuff we need to solder up at the bottom before we get onto the flight controller and at the moment we're going to use a swift camera as we've just looked at. Swift camera will accept anything from 5 to 17 volts so the nice big voltage ranges on the kit we've got here is going to make this dead easy for us. The first thing we could do is connect the Swift camera onto one of the 5 volt outputs. At the moment I've just shown it here plugged into the left one but either one would work and that 5 volt output supplies up to 1.25 amps, miles more than the camera would need but it would supply a nice clean 5 volts to the camera to make it work. And then we could plug in the FPV video transmitter directly into that filtered output which again the 0.75 amps should be fine. We could also plug the FPV video transmitter directly into the power distribution board itself, solder the connections on top of an existing motor connection, but if we have a filtered connection that's going to help with interference, we'll try that first. The way I am actually going to do it is make this really straightforward. I am going to plug the FPV video transmitter power, going to solder those two wires onto that filtered output and ground cable, so that will do the elite transmitter and then I'm just going to use the inbuilt 5 volt out from the FPV video transmitter to run the Swift camera and the reason I'm doing that is because those two 5 volt outputs one of them is already run for the flight controller I want to keep the other one free to run my LED lights once we've got that done then putting the rest of the FPV equipment starts to get a little bit easier all we have to do is connect the video from the camera into the video in on the RE1 flight controller and these connections are all at the front again we'll look at it when I've done it in a second and the video out cable goes to the FPV transmitter and that is the bits and pieces that I need to do at the front but I'm going to do that first because if I'm going to solder up all of the connections to the ESCs then that is going to start to uh, get in the way and potentially make it difficult for me to do it the other way around. So let me stop the video there, what I'm going to do is go back to the bench, let me make these connections off, we'll come back and have a look and then talk about wiring up the motors. So here in this first image we've actually connected up both the LEDs which are those two connections the plus 5 volts and the ground by the side of the riser pins and then next to that we have the power going off to the video transmitter unit and that again is the cleaned voltage from the battery. You will notice on here that uh, just be aware that it's all marked up so you can see which is ground which is 12 volts and as you go along you can see which is ground which is filtered which is 5 volts which is ground and it does change around the ground switch to the outside of the pins so always triple check as you're making things up but once that was made up and here it is looking from the top so the top of the board is now the same as the diagram in the manual that's how we've got that connected so we have the LEDs powered and that's all done we have all of the power connections that we should need what we can do now is pop the flight controller on the top and make off the video leads from both the camera and the video transmitter. And here they are connected. So what I've done here is just like we did in the wiring diagram, the power is going into that connector on the right hand side, that's going to plug into my video transmitter. Then the five volts out of that video transmitter goes along under those two little bits of heat shrink into the back of the camera. The video from the camera out then is going into the video in or VI on the flight controller and V or video out is going up into the video transmitter plug so that should be all of my FPV stuff done now I've left lots of room here so we can lift up the flight controller to make off the connections for the motors 
Now, one of the things you have to be careful of here is the motor connections if you're running deronin is different from if you're running beta flight. So if you already have one of these flight controllers running deronin and then you want to change to beta flight, you are potentially going to have to do a little bit of messing about, either resoldering or creating a custom motor mix. So we're going to solder it here as though it's going to be run with beta flight, but we are going to leave ourselves a little bit of extra room in case in the future we need to move some of these cables around. Now looking in the manual, it's pretty straightforward. We can see here that on the left hand side, all of the motors are listed. So motor one or PWM output one is the one at the very front of the board or the top as we're looking at the diagram and then two, three, four are underneath. Now the tip I'll give you here, which has saved my bacon a couple of times, is it can get very complicated when you start snipping wires off. So what I've done here is just to keep track of which motor is which, I've actually written the motor number that corresponds to the number in beta flight on the little servo connector. And that way, as I clip each of those servo connectors off and make the ends up, I can keep track of what I'm going to do. And what I've done then is going from underneath. Now, just say in the manual, be careful about noise from these signals. I'm gonna try it underneath just to keep it a neater installation, but we'll see how we get on. So what I've done is just soldered each of those motor wires, one after the other, so that all of them are connected. And then that should be our motor connections done too. So the last thing we need to do then is to actually connect up our radio receiver. Now we're going to use that FR Sky XSR. That has five different cables coming out of it. We can either use it for SBUS, PPM or whatever. But, but there is only one connection on the flight controller here at the bottom of the RE1 uh, where it's plus voltage, ground and signal in. Now remember we initially set up whether or not that voltage out of that port was going to be 5 volts or 3.3. If you're going to use a traditional receiver you're going to use 5 volts which is what we've set it up for. If you're going to use something like a satellite receiver then that's going to want the 3.3. So here the wiring is going to be pretty straightforward too. We're just going to wire the ground and plus 5 volt cables from the radio receiver to those pins at the bottom of the board and we're also going to then connect in our case, the SBUS signal pin, we're going to connect that to the signal pin on the bottom of the board. And then the other thing we're going to do is connect the telemetry, smart pop telemetry, to the pin that's shown in the manual. Now, I'm not sure if we might have to make one little more alteration on here, but with all of those pieces together, we now have done pretty much all the soldering I'm expecting to do. So the last thing to do then is to just put it all back together, plug in the camera, plug in the video transmitter, plug in the radio receiver, use a little bit of cable tie action, a little bit of double-sided tape, and we are ready for the next video. So join me in the next video where what we're going to do is come back, plug this little guy into beta flight and do the configuration, make sure the on-screen display is working and we're all happy with that. And then finally, at the end of that video, we'll take it out for a test hover. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.